Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarnflex podcast. My name is Audrey, I am a knitwear designer from the southwest of France and this is a podcast where I talk about all of my fibre creations. Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're doing well. Um, I am aware that in this room there's a little bit of echo with the sound and I'm very sorry but I can't do much about it lately and it's a rather dark day and this is the only place where there's light and I have quite a few uh, projects to share that needed good light to show you the details. I thought it would have been ashamed if it was all blurry and dark. So that's what we're doing with, dealing with. And yeah, I uh, have a shawl heavy episode. I am really in the mood for shawls. I did plan to make quite a few this year, quite a few designs. So yeah, that's what we're going. I um, I'm going to start. Uh, so you can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. And if you want to skip anything, find a project in particular or skip uh, any sections, you can look at that. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the patterns and the yarns that I will be mentioning, as well as links to my social media and my patterns and my Patreon page if you would like to support my business and have access to some behind the scenes content. First of all, I am wearing my Nynaeve cardigan, which is a uh, design of mine, which has been released a while ago now. And uh, this is a top-down drop shoulder cardigan with this texture panel, which is a mix of cable, lace and bubbles. And the rest of it is in double moss stitch. No, just moss stitch. Yes, moss stitch, normal one. And yes, I knitted it in... Orion DK, Orion DK, which is a BFL and mass and blend from By Night Dyes, which is a Belgian indie dyer, and it's a beautiful blend. I really love BFL Massam. It's really soft, and it has that really interesting definition because the Massam adds a bit of elasticity, whereas the BFL shines a bit, and it just has that crisp look, but still a bit fuzzy. And yes, it's really nice. Um, yeah, BFL, because it has long fibers, uh, there's more scales and the light reflects on a lot more areas. And that's why longer fibers, if I understood correctly, tend to shine more. It's also what happens with Gotland. And so it's a lovely blend, naturally dyed by Natalie from By Night. And yeah, it's one of my favorite cardigan. And yeah, one of my warmest garments, and it is actually cold here, um, finally. Uh, it was 22 degrees at uh, Christmas, so great, Celsius. Uh, but now it is zero, <laughs> so winter, uh, so time for DK weights. But yes, this is what I'm wearing, and I'm going to start with a new pattern release, which is a shawl. I warn you, it's gonna be very shawl, uh, a very shawl episode. And this is the Letty Shawl, which is a new design that I just published. And it is a triangular shawl, but as you can see, it is quite fine and long. You start here with one tip and you increase first here to put the border and then you start increasing here to have the main body of the shawl in stockinette and you keep increasing, increasing with the lace border until you have used about a third of your yarn and then you stop making just plain stockinette and instead you have these pearl ridges to add a little bit of texture and interest after the whole this stockinette. You reach the halfway point, basically when you have used half of your yarn and then you start decreasing all the way back to the other end. And so this is uh, very easy to modify in terms of length and size. So you increase slowly, but basically you can stop whenever you want, depending on what length you want, because as you can see mine is quite long, and uh, what amount of yarn you have. This makes it a good pattern for any weight of yarn, really. Uh, you can use fingering weight or you can use DK, like me. I used 
a yarn that is kind of no longer available. I used the yarn from Les Petites Potions, which uh, was a French indie dyer. She, no, she is no longer um, dyeing yarn. But this was her Neige base, which is a blend of 50% wool and 50% alpaca in a decay weight. It is actually the same base as Fonti Polaire. Fonti, which is a French uh, industrial brand of yarn. And yeah, so you get the pleasure of a wool alpaca mix, basically. It has that drape, thanks to the alpaca, but it still has a really nice definition and it doesn't stretch too much the lace. And yeah, so in terms of the lace, <laughs> so um, I'm quite happy because this is a lace that I made from scratch. So, well, it's, <laughs> it's nothing uh, revolutionary, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, usually when I come up with a texture for a design, I start from something that I already know, either something that is in a stitch dictionary or that I've used before, and I modify it, you know, I change the symmetry, I change the spacing, the size of it, I may add or remove certain elements, and it might be modified so much that it doesn't look at all like the original, but there was still some base here. This I made myself, <laughs> and again, it's not, it's nothing too unique. I mean, it's triangles in garter with some twisted ribbing, you know, um, and there are quite a lot of Japanese inspired motif that may look like it, but I'm quite happy because, well, uh, it, it was a different process. And there is both charts and written instructions. So if you're not comfortable using charts, especially flat, um, which I know can be a trouble for some people, well, there's written instructions. And there are video tutorials for the special stitches. So you have a mock cable here and a smock effect here, smocking. Um, and I've, put, I've made a video tutorial showing how to do this. So the rest of it is just eyelets and decreases. So fairly, fairly simple uh, to do. And yeah, there is the lace. I uh, really like it. And I wanted your opinion, because if I ever want to use it on a garment, do you think it looks better angling down like this, so making Vs, or angling up? And yeah, that's kind of the... Look, I can do it both simultaneously if I put the shawl like this. It's... um. It's kind of the dilemma, right? When you have motifs that have a visible direction, like this one, for example, doesn't. It's, it's left or right, but it's not top or down. And I usually don't really have a preference. Uh, and it's the case here. I just don't know. <laughs> so yeah, if you prefer it one way or the other, let me know. It might spike some inspiration in me for a garment using this. It's a short repeat, it's fairly intuitive. I don't think that you can really memorize it, but because it's like a small band over the rest of the show, which is fairly simple, um, it's still accessible and it's a nice relaxing knit overall. Uh, there are ga garter borders everywhere. And yeah, like I said, easy to modify. Mine is very long, as you can see. I like triangle shawls that are long, but I also like triangle shawls that are deep. I know some people have a strong preference for one or the other. Me, not so much. So I tend to alternate between the two possibilities. And this one is long. You can see it's not so deep and it still has these long ends that you can knot to keep it in place if you like. And it's quite loose, could have tightened it a little bit more, but yeah, this is what it looks like. It's also long enough to wear it the outlander way, right, which is where you cross it at the front, um, like so, 
Like if you could do it a little bit neater than I, but you can, you can move it like this as well. And yeah, it just stays nicely on the back. And that is Letty, which is now available. And for the release, I've put a little discount code, which will give you 15% off on Ravelry with the code Letty. So it's L E T T I E. Yeah. And yeah, I hope you like it. This little lacy shawl, very fairy like. Uh, and um, I'm gonna do a sharp turn. <laughs> Um, like I said, I have planned quite a few shawl designs this year and I even added one that was not planned, but I just felt like doing more shawls. But before this, I have a finished project, so I'm not going to show it to you because my partner is wearing it and I'm not going to <laughs> take it off of him and letting him freeze. <laughs> um, to show it to you, but I have taken a little video of him twirling and parading for the camera for you to see how it fits. So I have finished the So Basic pullover, which was a design by Maxime Sear, which I have knitted for my partner. So yeah, I'll put the video here. It uh, really suits him, he's really happy with the fit, which is great for me because this way I have a reference for a simple design that I can just reuse and perhaps make something different with it, stripes or anything. Um, yeah, really like it. It is a top-down raglan, so you need the color, then you start the raglan increase, and you have this seven by one ribbing, which you do on the sleeves. Very easy garment, you just need to follow the ribbing on uh, with the increases in the raglan and the decreases on the sleeve. And then it's plain stocking that body. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I, um, if you remember <laughs> when I was knitting it, I did um, I did something wrong on the sleeves. Basically, with the decreases, I had a purl stitch at the end of my rows, which was uneven. Like there was no other purl stitch on the other side, and I didn't understand what I did wrong. I found my mistake. Uh, basically, as soon as you start the decreases, you end the rows with a knit stitch. But because, uh, so I knitted size L, which is 114 centimeter finished uh, bust, just, and um, with the number of stitches on the sleeves in a size L, you end the row, the round, with a perfect repeat, and so you end on the pearl stitch, and so I kind of wanted to keep it, but then it looked weird. Um, so I replicated my mistake on the other sleeves anyway, so that it uh, symmetrical and it doesn't disturb the flow of the pearl stitch in the cuff so that's fine it's not a big deal um, but yeah um, it's a really easy pattern regardless and yeah it really suits him he's he really likes the fit of the neck of the um, raglan depth he's really happy with the hem um, how it's like cinched in a little bit but not too much um, I didn't modify the length. Uh, my partner is one meter seventy-two. I have no idea how much that is in freedom measurement. Is it five foot five six? I don't know. I think I'm five foot four. So it's, it's something like this. But I don't know <laughs> the difference. I don't know how much a foot is. So I'm just going to stop trying. Um, but yeah, it's one meter seventy seventy-two. And um, so I shortened the sleeves by seven centimeter, um, which is three inches, three quarters, something like this. And uh, no, three inches. And I uh, shortened the body by 10 centimeter, which is four inches. So yeah, um, it would have been way too long if not, um, if I followed the recommended length, uh, which is a good example of why I don't like to put length in my patterns because it doesn't work <laughs> so yeah i i never respect the length in the pattern because they don't match me and they don't match my path partners either um so it's a good that it was a top down sweater so that i could try it on and we could get the perfect size for him um despite shortening it i did use a lot more yarn than what the pattern says this is because my row gauge was off and i used a yarn that i knitted quite densely i think um I used 1,700 meters, so about two and a half 
Bowls More uh, of yarn. Um, I used Lana Grossa Cool Wool, which is a pure merino superwash from Lana Grossa. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, when I'm using merino superwash for the first time, the, I hadn't knitted with this yarn before. An industrial superwash merino, I'm a little bit wary of how much it's gonna grow because sometimes they just spread endlessly. And so I was a bit careful and I thought that knitting it dense would be a good idea. The pattern is knitted in figuring weight, whereas the yarn I used is more of a sport DK weight. And so I knitted it densely. I had exact stitch gauge, but the row gauge was off, which is probably why I used a lot more and because it's not the exact same. I think it uses... Which one does it use? It uses the La Bien Aimé yarn, but I don't know if it's the crossover with Mondim or another one. I'm not sure. Um, but it uses a um, non-superwash yarn, I think. Anyway, different, different fiber densities, different amount of yarn used. But I, I'm quite happy with it because it did grow in length. I think I gained a few centimeters, but not extraordinarily so. So I think it's a good yarn for my partner and for me if I ever want a superwash merino garment in a DK weight. The cool wool exists as a fingering weight, as a sport DK and as a worsted iron. So there's a big range. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice and soft. It's really round and uh, heavily plied. <laughs> There's uh, 10 plies, 5 plies, each of which... Uh, no, that's not the right uh, word. Each of those 5 plies are 2 plies already. So good definition, really round yarn. I like it. Um, and it's soft and it's good for people who are sensitive to wool. My partner prefers softer wool. Well, he says that. And then he took some skein from my stash who are non-superwash um, Dutch um, wool. It's a mix of... Um, no, I forgot. Uh, the text, text, something text. Hmm. Uh, and uh, he likes this one, uh, even though I find it maybe a bit prickly. Um, makes no sense. But yeah. I am um, really happy with the result. I know that I have a base pattern with the standard raglan that really suits him and I might reuse it in the future to make some simple stripes or something uh, for him. He tends to like simpler garments, which is <laughs> my problem. Um, he's not much taller than I am, so my problem knitting him garments is not so much that it's, it might take me longer, is that he likes boring patterns joking but yeah um slowly slowly i'm like eating at his brain and making him like color work and cables so that i might uh actually knit him garments that take a lot more effort but i i would just really like to now that we are living together it will be much easier for me to knit garments for him um yeah because i love to knit and my own wardrobe is starting to be a bit full. <laughs> so yeah, I um, there are some patterns that I really like and that he likes too that I might make in the future. He does want a zipper sweater from Petite Knit, you know, the one that she has in different gauges and in uh, different versions like she does. And um, I want one too, but I want one in the lighter DK weight. But the one he wants is in bulky weight. So even if it's only stuck in it, it's okay, because he, he, I say this, and I plan to knit myself a full-on stockinette sweater when it's released soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, in bulky weight, it will go faster, the zipper one. Sorry, I'm going everywhere a bit with my brain. I'm not making a lot of coherent discourse. Um, but the zipper thing is interests me. So I think this will be his next sweater, the bulky weight zipper, um, which means I might not actually make it this year because um, when it's cold now, uh, it was hot in, uh, in Christmas, like I said, and now it's cold, but it's not going to 
stay cold for long enough that I, it's worth it for me to make a to make a bookie weight sweater now. Even though I don't mind so much uh, out of season knitting, uh, so I might do it still. We'll see. Once I have knitted the 55 garments I want to make for myself still. <laughs> um, I might jump into the next one for him. But yeah, So Basic by Maxim Sear is um, good and worked very well for him. I have a couple of works in progress I wanted to show you. And the first one is a new one, which is a future design that I'm working on. I felt like doing mosaic knitting. Um, it just, it's been on my mind for a while that I wanted to make mosaic knitting. I have a bank of mosaic um, patterns that I really like and I've charted them and placed them all together. I have like a dozen or so of them on my computer that are intended for future designs. And I just really felt like doing one right now. So I got some yarn from Derero Natura, which is the French brand of non-superwash well, they have different ranges, but this is Ulysse, which is their non-superwash merino, which is a woolen span. And I got it in the colorway Biche, which is Doe, uh, which is this nice um, beige, uh, Erable, Maple, which is one of my favorite colors of them. We are not surprised. Uh, Doré, golden, which is not as mustardy as it appears right now on the camera. It's more, it's really gold. And forest, so forêt, forest, green, which is a really interesting green. It's dark, but it's not so dark that it wouldn't show textures well, I think. So it's quite cool. And yeah, I got these colors and I wanted to make a show. It took me a really long time to figure out how I wanted to arrange the colors. In the end, I went for a simple mosaic pattern. I wanted something that was quite monotonous in a sense that you would do the same pattern for a long time so that it would get into this nice rhythm and it would be this one repeat a day type of project. And so I am doing a, an asymmetrical triangle, which is going to be quite big for my sample. So yeah, I basically started here with one end and I'm increasing every right side row. And this is how the motif looks. So really a, a basic wave mosaic pattern, which I'm doing in all over garter. Mosaic knitting, you can do it in stockinette, mixing knits and pearls or in garter, which is what I'm doing here. And yes, so like I said, you see, I could have made stripes it's a shadow motif, which means that basically this and this are the same thing, but colors are reversed. So you could do stripes. It's going to be a fun show to make with leftovers, I think. Um, me personally, I ended up making a whole section in the green. And then I switched to the gold. And this is fun because it's like that optical illusion, you know, where some paintings or pictures, when you look at them on a diff certain angle, they don't look like anything, but if you look at them differently, they start to show a pattern. I forgot how it's called. Um, yeah, but it's a really interesting thing and you can reproduce it with fabric. And it sort of does that, because you see here, that doesn't look like anything. But if I try to catch it properly, now you can see the motif a little bit better when it's in the gold, because the contrast is not as strong. So it's quite fun. And it's gonna be horrible to photograph. <laughs> um, but I like it. Um, so yeah, this is what I went with for the colors in the end. I am going to continue a bit with the yellow. This is not going to be very um, efficient in terms of yarn management. Uh, because see, I have all of this green left from the second bowl and I'm going to probably use just a little bit of the second skein that I have of the golden uh, because I want to continue a little bit and then I will start a border 
pattern which is going to be a different motif similar but it will be more like vertical zigzags instead of horizontal waves um, but yeah so I'm going to have leftovers but I think it might be a fun show to make different color combinations of. So the pattern is written as if there was only one contrast color and then people can do whatever they want with it. And I indicated what I'm doing myself. And yeah, it's really nice and easy to knit. Um, I do really like knitting mosaic. I have done a couple of designs in it, um, but not so much that I have a set uh, way of giving instructions. So mosaic knitting, it's um, you're knitting one color at a time and you're creating the pattern by knitting some stitches which are in, in your working color and then slipping the other stitches which will remain in the other color. So you, every, you need two rows with each color back and forth, basically. Every, every other row you change color. And the thing is, you essentially are doing the same row twice. Every wrong side row is the same as the right side row, meaning that the stitches that you have knitted on the right side, you will knit as well on the wrong side and the stitches that you slipped, you will slip as well. This makes it quite interesting, intuitive to knit because contrary to other types of texture, perhaps you don't really need to look at the pattern when you're doing the wrong side because when you look at your rows you're like okay if i'm knitting with the gold color i see a gold stitch i'm gonna knit this i see a beige stitch i'm gonna slip it you are knitting the stitches that are in the color that you're carrying and you're slipping the others this makes it so that you only have to pay attention to the chart on the right side rows and traditionally mosaic charts the correct way is to have one line for two rows, right? This shows the proper proportion because especially if you're knitting in garter, well, you're making two rows for one line. And this way you have like one, two at each end of the charts and you know that you have to do the same row twice in the opposite direction. However, I find that this is a bit confusing for people and also it would have made me do two different charts because since I'm increasing and it's not the same, you're not increasing on the wrong side row. So the wrong side rows are the same until the edges. And I didn't want to have two charts. I didn't want to have an exterior chart and a motif chart and a repeat chart. It, um, I decided that I wanted the pattern to be as beginner friendly as possible. So. I made the chart row by row, basically, which means that it's elongated, but you have the right side and the wrong side rows. This way, if you're not comfortable having the mental gymnastic of thinking like, okay, I'm doing the wrong side row, but I only see the right side chart. So I need to think, okay, I need to slip the stitches the other way because now I'm on the wrong side and it's reversed, etc. I know it might confuse people. So <laughs> I decided to do row by row this way. Everything is in the pattern. And I'm also going to put written instructions because um, this way it's like much smoother. <laughs> like there's no question of what color you need to use, what color you need to knit or slip, etc. It's um, it's very easy to follow written instructions in mosaic. I found that a lot of people really need them in mosaic specifically because it's an easy thing to knit, but it might be a bit difficult to understand. And I find it really interesting to try and explain mosaic knitting. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't done that many designs. I have like three designs in mosaic knittings. I have two shawls and one pair of socks that uses the mosaic principle. So I'm still trying to find um, the best way for me to explain the technique in my patterns and how I want to, um, to make it work. So it's just really, it's an interesting thing in mosaic. So in, this, in these motifs, you only slip one stitch at a time, which means that uh, there's no tension issues because um, you don't have floats really. 
but there are some mosaic patterns where you can slip multiple stitch at once and it makes a very interesting geometric uh, restraint you, you need to think about your tension and how it needs to fit a certain way and it makes those really interesting patterns because they are they need to follow certain rules and i find i find that fascinating geometrically and mathematically speaking and yeah it's just an interesting technique to design with i find personally and uh, yeah i'm trying to have a set of instructions that is as beginner friendly as possible because like i said it's an easy kind of repetitive pattern and yeah i want everyone that would like it to be able to access the, the pattern instructions um, so yeah I, I just went into a ramble I, I just had a, um, a lot of fun writing the pattern like I said it's maybe a more monotonous knitting experience because it's especially since I'm making it so long you will be able to adjust the length um, I wrote a note you will just need to make a little calculation because the border chart will need to be done over a certain uh, number of stitches so there, there will be an explanation in the pattern for this but mine i wanted it to be long <laughs> i wanted it to be long so the the knitting experience is a bit more mindless for me and a bit more repetitive but the writing writing the pattern um was really interesting uh, figuring out how i wanted it to to be so yeah, row by row charts, row by row full written instructions and a, a explanation of how mosaic works so that people who have more experience also can just glance over and be like, okay, I know how to knit mosaic. So if you, if like myself, you're more comfortable, you can just pay attention every right side row. The repeats are short. Um, they're, like I said, it's kind of double the same thing and it's only 10 stitches wide, which means that um, it's really easy to, um, once you started the row, you don't really need to be focused on it anymore because there's like only four or five different rows. There's a sequence where you knit seven, slip one, knit one, a sequence where you knit three, then knit five, one is you knit three, then knit four times one stitch it's only two or three different rows and it's easy to get it into your head so yeah uh, it was a uh, interesting pattern writing and I would like to release this in April which is obviously why I picked uh, such autumnal colors right uh, <laughs> but um, yeah I just need to finish it with uh, i think i'm almost done because like you see it's already quite big i wanted it chunky uh, short that would be firm as well i'm knitting it on 3.5 millimeter needles which is this should be written somewhere here us4 which is quite small for ulysses ulysses is a sport weight um, and it makes a rather dense fabric, which I wanted so that you could see the mosaic nicely, especially since it's in garter stitch. But because Ulysses is a wooden span and it's airy and it's a two ply that stays very light, it's not so stiff. So it's going to be really warm and cozy and be firm uh, without being too stiff. And yeah. Uh, I'm really liking it. I can't wait to block it and wear it. I, um, what did I say? You will be able to use fingering weight as well, basically. If you want something a little bit less dense, use fingering weight for this. Uh, I don't know exactly what gauge I'm getting. I need to measure it again. I um, wanted to say something else. And I forgot. But yeah, this uh, this will be called Verdier, which is a name for a little yellowish green bird. And I thought it was cute and fitting. And it is how it is for this simple mosaic shawl. You can see you can make stripes, smaller stripes. I think the color variations will be interesting on this. And 
yeah I think that's about it that's about I have the impression I forgot to say something compared to the French episode uh, but I don't remember what it is so I'm going to move on to my last work in progress which I just wanted to show because the colors are pretty and they make me happy and I just wanted to show them to you as well and I have made some progress on the garter shawl that I am knitting with one of my advent calendars which was a half advent from Artemis Yarn so Artemis Yarn which is a French knitted dyer she had an advent um, based on a riot knee um, and she um, she offered different types of advents which I really appreciate and I only got the half one which was 12 mini skeins and then there was a full skein as a sock set which had another mini skein so I ended up with 13 mini skeins of yarn and I'm making it into a basic garter shawl with I-cord edges I am not following any specific pattern for this but of course it is the trendy thing to do at the moment so you will find lots of patterns uh, like this and yeah this is where I am so the the mini skins all made a, a gradient a gradient I, I'm constantly removing hair from my knits <laughs> so yeah I didn't make any fading effort I just switched from one color to the next and I increased until the halfway point which is that pink at the center and now um, I'm decreasing back all the way I still have three colors left and a little bit of this one which is in this bowl this is what I have left so yeah I Looking forward to blocking it and see how big it grows. Um, I didn't knit it too loosely. I usually will make sure, would make shawls in fingering weight using four millimeter needles, but I went with 3.5 as well. I don't know why. I'm just, it is my <laughs> 3.5 millimeter era, it seems so. So it's not so loose, but garter stitch will still stretch and this brown I love it um, I'm really proud of myself because I haven't missed a stitch you know when you knit garter since it's only knit 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 sometimes I don't knit fully and I will end up with a slip stitch in the middle of not, not dropped just slipped and it's very visible in garter stitch because you don't have the pearl bump you have like a very visible gap um, and I can't see any now so I made all this guard stitch and I managed not to do the mistake and I'm quite surprised because <laughs> it usually always happens uh, but yeah is the eye cord edge etc so that is just a colorful nice shawl I'm wondering if I would have liked the center to be dark rather than the, the ends and like reverse basically have the light the, the light colors at the ends. I don't know. I like both I think. And yeah, this is my colorful show, which I'm looking forward to having finished. I think I'm going to focus on this this weekend and finish it. Um, because I have quite a couple, a few personal work in progress at the moment and if I have too many work in progress I don't know what in it <laughs> basically I'm um, yeah I'm jumping from one to the next and I feel like uh, none of them are um, advancing so I would like to finish it so I can go back to knitting um, a sweater that I have on the needles as well and yeah, make room for new ones uh, because there's like so many garments that I want to make for myself at the moment. I don't know what it is, but everyone is releasing so many beautiful patterns and I'm like, please stop. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm waiting for, I really like the Diona or Diana pullover from Spadinorlun that uh, is 
currently being test knitted. She has another design on her needles that I really like as well and I want to make as well. Atelier Emilie, which is a French designer, who, she does her patterns in English as well. She has a beautiful black sweater that she's going to release and I love it and I want to make it in dark purple. And that's the one that is only stuck in it and I'm still going to make it because I'm not coherent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so many beautiful garments that I want to make. I, oh, I also want to make a fully half fisherman's rib um, fingering weight sweater in bright pink. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the plan. Um, but yeah, one project at a time or two projects at a time <laughs> will be better for me. Um, so yes. Uh, I want to finish this episode by just chatting a little bit about Patreon because I have a Patreon page where you can support my business and basically uh, you have um, uh, one or two free patterns per month. It's, it's a way for you to buy your pa my patterns uh, in another way and you also have access to behind the scenes special content. Every month I release a special video on Patreon which I record in French but I subtitle them in English myself and this month the Patreon video for February is a general description of how to build a drop shoulder garment. So I go over mostly my preferred way of making drop shoulders and basically just gives you an overview of how they're built so that in case you are knitting patterns that are not so beginner friendly you can get a better sense of how this works um, and you can also be more comfortable making modifications if you need to for your personal body type or if you would like to change something add your own textures or something like this um, yeah this is the patreon video for february there is also plan i have plan <laughs> i've been filming a little creative vlog for patreon um this is something new that i'm trying this year i wanted to make a more general vlog which is a bit is in between the podcast the um behind the scenes vlog and the more uh, music vlogs that i um, publish sometimes here on youtube the pause vlogs I made a mix of that. I just wanted to have a more broad creative vlog for Patreon and I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it but I'm having fun doing the first one <laughs> and it will be published in February um, sometime along the month when I'm done blabbering about what I'm making, baking, reading, um, which is kind of the jumble of things that i'm sharing in that vlog so yeah that is a new type of content that will be on patreon and when you join patreon you can see everything that was published before so you have a big catalog of videos you have a few exclusive patterns and like i said you get one or two patterns as well of your choice within my pattern library so there it is Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you again at the end of February. And yeah, I wish you a very happy end of the day and very happy evening, depending when you're watching this video. And I will see you next time. Bye.